Do, 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 do. Okay, I think we're good to go. So Jessica, you can get started. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, I am uh, grateful to be a part of this speaker series and grateful to be able to connect with um, some families from Centennial this year um, when um, there are not as many in-person things, um, in-person things happening. And so to be able to connect this way is is wonderful. So thanks all for coming tonight. Um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen now. If you were on a little bit earlier, you saw me testing this out. So um, someone just give me a shout if it doesn't look right. And I should be able to. Uh -oh. It looks like on my end, it just went away. It was loading and then it went away again. So you might need to try oh. to present now again. Let's see. Okay. I know Google Meet can be kind of fun. Oh. Thank you all for your patience. I promise <laughs> we did test this earlier. <laughs> okay. And there, there we go. go. So this is, if I can find a way to make it bigger. I I don't know how to make it the full screen, but <laughs> can everybody read this and see this okay? Yes, it looks good. Okay, okay great. Well, we'll just go from here. Um, thank you. Yes, as Sarah said, I am a board certified music therapist. I um, <clears throat> have been practicing for about 10 years now and um, really enjoy working with children and families. I was uh, working in a K through five charter elementary school for a few years, um, but really miss that family component. And so um, for the past uh, about six years, I'm working with a few different community organizations um, where I'm getting to work with um, parenting groups and classes as well as some early childhood classes. And so um, that is, is really where where uh, the bulk of my experience is, but really everything that we will we'll talk about today can be adapted and and be flexible and be something that you can really use with any age group of children and for yourself too, because um, these ideas of self care and stress management are so important for all of us, regardless of age. Um, and so hopefully we will we'll get to do that. I'm wondering. Um, okay, bear with me real quick. So I can't see any of you, but that's okay. All right, <laughs> I'll go back to the presentation. So um, just give me a, feel free to turn your mics off and, and give a shout real quick. Has anyone um, worked with a music therapist before, had experience with music therapy in any way? It's okay if, if that's a no, um, that's, that's what I usually get. Uh, I often get this question of what is music therapy? Um, and what my go-to definition is, is that music therapy is when we're using music in a functional, practical way to work towards a non-music goal. And that's quite broad. Music therapists are working in lots of different settings in hospitals, schools, nursing homes, um, community-based settings, um, uh, hospice care, um, and you, you name it really. And in Minnesota, it's an awesome place to be a music therapist. Um, all of the major hospital systems in the uh, Twin Cities metro area have music therapists. A lot of the school districts will have a music therapist on staff or contract music therapists um, on a, a as needed basis. Um, and so there are, oh gosh, we are um, over a hundred or probably about a hundred music therapists in Minnesota uh, altogether. And um, everyone is, is making it work. All of us made the switch to virtual music therapy services. Um, just like the all of us made the switch to virtual everything um, in the past year. But we are, are so grateful for the collaboration that we do. That's, I, that's the best part of my job um, is that whether I am in a school or working with um, 
parenting groups, working with other developmental therapists, um, uh, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, that that's been just so great. So so we're really collaborating on those non music goals and and helping and supporting by including music into to some of those goals that that other folks are working on. As Sarah mentioned, I'm happy to answer any um, specific music therapy questions at the end or give you any other resources for music therapy specifically. But tonight our goals are really just to give you some some ideas, some practical things that you can do at home. Um, The thing that I love best about giving presentations is that I always end up walking away with new ideas. Um, and so as we're going along too, if something sparks an idea or if there's been something that you've been doing at home that is working really well, um, please share it with us. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we kind of take something we learn here and there and adapt it and change it a little bit and, and find ways to, to make it work at home. So, so that's my goal for us tonight. Um, I am going to move us on, um, to this idea of an anthem, of your anthem. Um, And I don't mean to put people on the spot, so I'm gonna give, I'm gonna explain this and I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to think about it. But um, think about the last, how many months are we into this? Um, uh, The last nine, 10 months or, or, or more, everyone is, you know, experiencing, all sorts of things, but um, think about a song, the title of a song. You don't have to sing it for us. You don't have to play it, um, but a song that kind of sums up or, or um, that you could just kind of label or blanket over these these past few months. So um, I'll go first. I'll give you a couple examples, and then um, I won't put it, anybody on the spot, but if you've got um, ideas, it is it's fun to, to hear that. And it would be helpful for me too, if you introduce yourself too. But um, uh, so for me, two that, that came to mind, kind of going in, in different um, pathways here. One is um, uh, the Bangles, Manic Monday, just another Manic Monday. Um, I... I just think how many manic (laughs) Mondays have we had in the last year Um, or just one of those days where you wake up and and everything is upside down. And so I think that is for me, one of the anthems of the last year is that we have have just had so many head spinning days. Um, Taking it kind of another direction, another anthem for me is a song called Rise Up by Andra Day. And the first line of the song is, um, when you're broken down and tired, living life on this merry-go-round and you can't find a fighter, I see it in you, we can work it out. Um, and, and then she goes on to, to sing. It's just a, a beautiful song, but just about getting up and keep going no matter what's going on. And, and so for me, those are two anthems that kind of sum up um, this co- these COVID times. Um, does anyone else, have I given you enough time? Does anyone else want to um, jump on and, and share a song title or meaning or, or something that is um, your anthem for the, the past year or so? Well, this is Sarah. This might, this might be a little, um, I don't know, morbid, but sometimes I think of that song. I forget the artist, but um, it's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> sometimes I just hear that chorus in my head and I'm like, ah, oh, here we go. I'm totally blanking on who sings that, but um, unfortunately on some of those more difficult days, I think of that song. <laughs> yes. Anyone else? <laughs> This is Jana. Um, I the immediately what came in my head was this is my fight song. Yeah, I'm my right song. Da, da. Like oh, that one gives me chills. Yes, yes. yeah. That's a great one. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, 
this is Courtney. Um, probably my favorite one that I even got like just one saying engraved on a ring. It's called Peace Be Still by Hope Darst. And yeah, sometimes it just randomly plays at like the right time. I felt like this year when I just need to take a minute, take a breath and just like soak in the lyrics. Like it's just amazing how music can speak to you. So that's been a huge one for me in 2020. Yeah, yeah that's great. Thank you. This is Elizabeth. Um, mine is the I get knocked down, but I get up again. Yeah. Whatever that song is. That's my favorite. <laughs> that's great. I love these. Thank you all so much for sharing. Anyone else, feel free to, to jump in. These are so fun to, to hear. We should make a playlist with, <laughs> with all of these. Anyone else? This is, this is Sarah Eisen. I'll Sarah. jump in here real quick. Um, I was thinking um, you, have, you have a friend in me. I have found this, this year relationships have meant so much to me and especially friendships um, have really risen up to the top and making sure that I'm a good friend and being so appreciative of the friendships that I have in my life. Oh, yes, that's fantastic. Anyone else? And another one I'll, I'll just share real quick that, um, uh, some colleagues of mine were um, talking about actually doing like a little performance, like a, a lip sync video. And um, they decided on the song, I'm Still Standing by, by Elton John. Um, and as again, just kind of like a, a summary of all that we've been through in the last year and to know that we're still here, we're still standing. And I do love how we've kind of got lots of, um, lots of different songs that that have a, a, a similar message um, that are, are really getting us through. And, and sometimes it's those songs where um, we're able to relate to just the chaos <laughs> that, that the lyrics are, um, are talking about. Like Sarah said, it's the end of the world. Um, you know, every time that we've gotten new news about something is closed and something's opening and somebody's schedule is changing again, it kind of feels like the end of the world because we got to put world on pause and, and restart and reframe. So um, thank you to, to those who shared. Um, and just something to think about. Um, I know that we all, um, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember who, who mentioned it before, but just how music just has that special meaning to us. And um, I think it was maybe Courtney who said, you know, this, this certain song comes on at the right moment. Um, and that can just be so powerful and, and meaningful. And so, um, let that idea kind of carry you through. We're going to come back to this a little bit later, but, um, thinking about how much music means to you and, and how much of a, a difference of a, a comfort, um, or just a release that it can make in your day is the same for kids too. Um, so we'll just transition here to um, some ideas that we can do, uh, ways that we can incorporate music um, to support kids who are dealing with so much right now. Um, as I was typing this um, a few days ago uh, and typing uncertain times, I just thought, wow, how, how often um, this phrase uncertain times um, has come up in the last year. And so whether it is some of these bigger issues um, that we've been experiencing in the last year, or whether it's, you know, um, the, the things that are impacting one specific family at a time, as opposed to, um, you know, the whole globe, um, 
that these are, are things that you can can build in and just just consider just um, brainstorming. So the number one thing um, that I always say is that music can support routines. Um, <clears throat> I um, am guessing that a lot of you um, on this call here um, have kids in the early childhood uh, age group or or maybe a little bit older now but um i always joke with early childhood teachers and say like the international um anthem of early childhood is clean up clean up everybody everywhere clean up clean up everybody do your shit right we all know this one and kids right they know exactly what to do you don't even have to say the words you can just start humming it <laughs> kids would get it and they would they would know what to do because it's part of their routine it provides a little bit of structure um and so whether kids are at home right now whether they are spending most of their day um in school, in preschool, in daycare, whatever that might look like, you can still incorporate music into um, your time at home. Um, so <clears throat> one thing um, that I uh, like to just keep in mind or just as a mm, kind of a, a, a weight off your shoulders is, is um, knowing that when we're when we're giving directions a hundred times right anytime whether it's cleaning up or going to brush your teeth or getting ready for bed or eating breakfast whatever it is you know that you don't just say it once right you you gotta say it at least three times anyway and so that's the beauty of incorporating it into a little bit of music a little bit of rhythm is that you're gonna naturally repeat it um and also it's going to just engage um, your kiddo's brain in a different way because it is engaging melody and rhythm and there are words there too and they're going to just perk up and, and, and be able to listen a little bit more when, um, when they're hearing that. And so um, singing little directions here and there, singing a cleanup song, um, singing, you know, time to brush your teeth, brush your teeth. Oh, it's time to brush your teeth, brush your teeth. Um, you don't have to have a, a, a song for everything. Uh, I um, give this example of a parenting group I was with one time and um, I have about three or four moms and their um, uh, toddlers sitting around in a circle. And uh, another parent just got there a little bit later. So they came in and without missing a beat, I just said, scoot on over. We got to make room for our friends. Scoot on over, scoot on over. It's time for music time. And this mom looked at me and she said, you have a song for everything. How did you know? And I just said, no, nope. I'm just, <laughs> um, these, these songs, these little melodies that we all know, just sing your directions. Um, it's providing that um, immediate um, repetition that we know kids are going to need anyway. Um, and it's just a little more engaging. It's, it's, it's engaging their brain in a different way. So maybe, maybe more likely to, uh, listen the first time around. Um, another way that I think parents right now, um, teachers really, really anyone, but using recorded music, um, we have, I, when I first became a music therapist and I was going to different early childhood programs, I would carry around a boom box and a stack of like CDs that had music burned on them for like each specific classroom that I was going to. And now I carry a phone and all of the music I ever need is on here. And so we have music on us at all times. And so let's, let's use that in, in a meaningful way. And so using recorded music whenever you can save your voice. Um, whether, you know, um, I know a lot of the schools are, are opening back up now um, to some degree, but if you've got uh, elementary, you know, middle school age kids, um, I know parents are doing a lot of extra talking because you're also the teacher now, right? Um, and so, so using music, save your voice for people that do work in 
um, positions or in fields where you're doing a lot of talking, anything you can do to save your voice is awesome. And so using music, have certain um, playlists, certain songs that are, you know, this is a song that we listen to um, in morning time, or this is the playlist that we have during quiet time. This is um, the song that lets us know that we're going to sleep. And then you don't even have to say anything. You just put on the music. If you've got a Bluetooth speaker, if you've got a way to, to hook it up or just, you know, on, on, on a phone, on a computer, on something, um, using music as part of your routines. Um, another thing is kind of along with that is using music for certain chunks of time. Um, and so this A is, is going to help little ones with, um, uh, uh, with that sustained attention piece. Might have to have a little support depending on the age. Um, but just knowing that, okay, we're going to put on three songs. When these three songs are over, then we're going to pick up the Legos. Um, so, so use that as a cue because when the music stops, that's, that's naturally going to be a cue, um, for your kids. And so being able to, to, to have that. Another thing I, I guess I was thinking of, um, in our situation now is that, um, kids who can be alone for a few minutes, whether you are, you know, in another room doing something else, supporting it, um, you know, their sibling or something, just being able to say, okay, we've got three songs. You gotta, you gotta keep playing. As long as the music is on, you can be in this room and you can keep playing. So, so use m music, um, really practically as part of your routine. Um, another thing is so using music to support that purposeful movement. Again, schools are, are opening back up, but um, I just talked to a lot of, um, I have a handful of individual clients that I work with as well. And my folks are, are mostly teens and young adults who would typically be at day programming throughout the day. So pretty similar to, to a school structure and now they're home. And, um, and everyone is just getting a little stir crazy and when we first started doing virtual lessons, it was really like novel and cool and interesting, but you know, we're, we're nine months in and this is not cool or interesting anymore. And so, um, working with families to think through, okay, well, what's changed and, and one, we're just not moving as much. There just aren't as many opportunities for purposeful movement. So, you know, thinking about kids who are at school and who, you know, we're doing this play time in, in this area, and then we're going to go over and do circle time over here. We are all going to line up and we're going to walk into the hallway together. And there are, are purposes and intentions for each of those different times you're moving throughout the day. And so using some music, just having a dance party, number one, we're releasing some energy. We can just have a dance party. Um, but we can also do some, some um, songs with movement. Um, Again, I, since I have been um, virtual with a lot of the individual clients I'm working with and some of the groups that I'm working with, I'm using a lot more recorded music. And so we're circling back to, we're talking YMCA, we're talking the cha-cha slide. These things are really not um, uh, complicated um, gross motor movements, right? And depending on the, the age of your kiddos, you can adapt it and make it as... Um, as developmentally appropriate for, for whatever they're doing. Um, I have uh, a kiddo I'm working with now and we've been doing the YMCA. She loves it. And, and when we get to the point where it's like YMCA, right? Instead of doing that, we're just doing it like way slower than that. So the music is still playing, but we just go big Y. Okay, M, now C, now A. And the, we're still doing it with the beat, the music's still going, and we've got dance moves to do for the, some of those other times. But that purposeful, intentional movement and getting kids just really in tune with their whole body is, is going to be really helpful. Um, and so there's that. On the other side of that, you have um, some slower, purposeful movement, doing some stretching, doing some um, breathing um, and just having some music on in the background to, again, pro it provides a little bit of structure. Um, so those are just 
some ideas there. So, so some dancing, taking a dance break, doing, um, you know, some, some of those fun dances. When I worked um, at the elementary school, I'd always tease my um, uh, students there and just say, okay, someday you, you're going to, you're going to go to a bunch of weddings, right? I just always would tell them and, you know, 15 to 25, 30 years from now, you're going to spend a lot of time at a lot of weddings and you got to know how to do the cha-cha slide. It's just a fact of life. And so we'll put that on, right? And we're working on left and right. We're just doing a little bit of movement, but um, so thinking through ways that you can do that at home, you know, your kids, you know, your family, don't, you don't have to do the cha-cha slide. You don't have to do the YMCA, but those are just some ideas to, you um, you know, put it on, get a little bit of that energy out, especially while we're inside a little bit more. I mean, we've had super nice weather the last few days, so hopefully that sticks around. But um, um, as it's winter, so we just, we all just need more um, ideas and ways to move around a little bit. Um, the other thing I have here is pairing this with sensory integration. I mentioned before, breathing. Uh, we'll do a couple of these together now. I'm not sure if um if any of you i know sarah has um been there when i've uh, been at centennial to do um presentations before but i always carry with me in my work bag when i used to need a bag to go to work uh, but now i don't i just come to this corner of my living room but um i always have lavender baby lotion with me um and with ages all, all ages, when I am just doing a group for a, a relaxation group for moms, when I'm doing a group for teenagers, it doesn't matter what age group, right? Everybody likes a little bit of lotion. You put on some quiet music and we go ahead and we just do some of that sensory integration. One, I like the lotion because you have the smell, you have the tactile, you've got, um, You've got music, so you're just really engaging a lot of different senses and um, bringing everything in alignment, right? Everything is kind of working towards the same goal. Um, so whether that is just having some, you know, rubbing in lotion and smelling and listening to music, or maybe it's incorporating music into bath time or a little baby massage or whatever those things are um that again are already part of your days but i just suggest try finding a way to add in music and see if it makes a difference for for you or your kiddos but um but know that that anything that we are when we're just really integrating as many senses as possible and providing that alignment that's that is so good for for development that's so good just to give the brain a rest that we're not working in all of these different directions which can happen a lot when we're spending a lot of time on screens right we have our eyes on the screen and then we got this thing going on over here and we got right uh, no. kids and animals running all over the place um so just an idea there oh i'm sorry did someone have i was just gonna say um this is sarah about um the lotion, I um, wanted to bring up that we have been doing that um, since Jessica shared that with us um, at a training. Our ECFE classes have been doing that. Um, well, at least this year, they, they weren't doing it as much because they were using it as a transition out of our motor room back into the classroom um, because so many kids were having a hard time leaving. And um, so the teacher has been kind of giving each kid a little squirt of lotion and the parents help rub it into their hands. And then they say a little poem just to kind of help them transition, help them calm down. The lavender helps calm their bodies after they've been running a lot in the gym and that it helps them get back into the classroom. And so that is something that, um, you know, it's, I don't think they necessarily sing a song, but it's, it's just kind of that break of like calming your body down a little bit of some repetition. And the poem is a little bit of that rhyming and, um, that rhythm. And it just, it really does help. And we've noticed a huge difference. So I just wanted to put that out there as, um, that yes, we do use that in our classes and it works really well. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's so great to hear. Yeah. So, so these are things that at home are probably happening already too. Right. And so just ways to, to really, um, be aware of, you know, sometimes we're doing things and we don't even realize like how, um, how awesome it is so so maybe just being a little aware of oh yeah this is actually really good 
um, for, for yes for supporting transitions. Um, so a few uh, you know deep breathe a few others that I, I jotted down um, just coloring to music, doing art to music. Um, again, this idea of, of having quiet time um, and and pairing it with music, particularly for our little ones who, one are more um, grew up from right from from the jump. Um, there was this technology around all the time, and um, thinking for for kids that are spending more time on screens, um, being able to sometimes and I I shouldn't even say specify kids because I <laughs> get this too right when all of a sudden every all the screens are off and everything is quiet i kind of get a feeling of like something's wrong or um that that feeling of where we just kind of reach for our phone for some sort of stimulation because it's it, it's these screens and so maybe try and offset that with let's just put on some music and and then it's it's not silent because that can that can be kind of jarring but having like okay we still have that stimulation going and we can build Legos, we can color or paint or do something. And so um, using that to, to our advantage um, and, and supporting kids to, to help them feel a little more um, safer, a little calmer in, in those transitions. Um, one I wanted to pair or try right now, um, and I honestly, I don't know, even know if people have their cameras on or off because I haven't just, I'm just looking at the same um, PowerPoint screen as you. So do whatever you want here um, in terms of, of your camera, but I'm just going to put on some, some quiet music and then we'll try something called square breathing. Um, I'm sure this is something that some folks are familiar with or have done some, um, something kind of like this before. Essentially, it's just a way to practice deep breathing um, for for kids. Maybe you know, starting about kindergarten age, it, it might be a little bit trickier for um, pre K age. But I think um, I think I think kindergartners could could definitely get this, especially with the drawing. So the idea is that you're drawing a square, and you could do it on paper. I'm just going to kind of do it in the air for us. And um, I, I first learned this or, or heard about this with just kind of like a counting or like a metronome sound. Um, but it's way better if you do it with music because um, you can just kind of feel the flow of the music. And again, just that full sensory alignment. So we'll try it now. If you want to try it with me, great. If not, I won't really know because I can't see any of you. Um, so. I am just going to put on, I realize we are recording this too. So I'm just going to put on, um, I'll make sure to say the name, but this is a song called I Am Light by India Ari. So we'll just listen for a second first. What we're going to do first is we're going to breathe in. I am light, I am light. Breathe out. I am light. 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 my family did. I am not the voices in my head. I am not the pieces of the brokenness inside. I am light. I am light.
So even right there in that minute or two, um, I, I became more just aware of my breathing and just a little bit more in tune with, um, with where my body is in space and time. And our kids are, are going to benefit from that too. Not only are they going to benefit from doing that themselves, but if they're doing it with you, if they're doing it with mom or dad, brother, sisters, anybody that's around, if they, even if they're doing it at school to be able to see an adult, um, practice that is also so important and so powerful. So, so again, that, that's just another idea. You can pair that with lotion and doing deep breathing with the lotion and then, well, let's try and draw a square and do our breathing that way. Um, so just an idea. Um, hopefully, hopefully you got a little minute there, a little moment to, to practice that as well. So pairing music that way. And with that, um, that self-awareness and that emotional vocabulary. Uh, so I always tell uh, parents for sure, talk to, ask your kids, not only what kind of songs they like, but ask them why they like it. How does it make you feel? Um, this is a really, really good way to support kids in building emotional vocabulary, right? Or just even bringing that self-awareness to like, oh yeah, why do I like this song? We know that um, kids immediately respond to music. Um, I, I, I'm sure you all remember the first time that you, you know, saw your little toddler, your little one, infants, maybe even just bopping along to music, right? They're responding right away. It is, it, it's, it's, I don't, I don't know. There's, there, there are always folks who ask me the ins and outs of the neurology behind um, how our, our brain is processing music. I don't know all the, the neurology of it. I just know what I see, right? I know what I feel and experience. I know um, that, that music is just to, so tied to, um, to, to all of our own experiences. And so, um, support kids in, in becoming more aware of that. Oh, I, I noticed you really like this song. How does this song make you feel? Listening to something else that sounds a little different. I um, When I was working at the K through five uh, charter school, our, our population was 90% um, of our, our population had a primary diagnosis of autism. Um, and so we, we had, if anyone um, knows the, the phrase, um, uh, with autism is if you know one child with autism, you know one child with autism, right? So, so we had lots of lots of different kids with lots of different needs, um, and I remember we were preparing for um, a performance. The fourth graders were going to do a performance, and they were going to sing um, Louis Armstrong's "What a Wonderful World." And every time I was just accompanying with the guitar, and as soon as I started playing it, just the opening chord. There was one uh, fourth grader, one girl who would just, just tears. And I don't, we don't think she was really sad per se. She was just so emotionally responding to the music. And so, um, so just being aware of how your kids are responding, talk to them about that. Um, talk to sh share as well, as much as you are asking of your kids, Share as well. We can really model these these behaviors, especially when it comes to things like music, because it's so tied to identity. And they're gonna love telling you about um, music that that means something to them. And and really, in the long run, they're really gonna take a lot from from you sharing things as well. Um, so with that, I'm gonna kind of jump over to um, to talking about some of these tips and ideas for us adults, which are really not that much different than the ones for kids. And then we will definitely have time for questions at the end. I have another little kind of relaxation activity for us to do after this as well. And then, and then we'll definitely have time for questions. But um, there is a, another music therapist in town that I I really like this idea of sips of, of self-care, right? When we kind of think about this idea, or maybe 
um, when I was younger, I'd think about like a, a self-care day or like a mental health day, right? You take a mental health day from work and I just think like, oh, you know, like a day at the spa or a, day, a whole day or a whole week where I do exactly what I want to do or I just sit on the couch and read a book or and that self-care is a whole day. But really that's not the the world we live in. Yes, we all deserve that and need that and, and you got to do that. But also you can't wait for that one day where you get a whole day of self-care. You've got to take these sips of self-care throughout the day, throughout the week to get you through. Um, and so I just really like that image. That doesn't even have a ton to do with music. Um, we'll talk about some ways that, that music can support that. But I really want you to think about that idea of how can I take a sip of self-care um, through throughout the day and um, and throughout obviously as um, everyone's I, I, as I understand I don't have kids I as I understand there are a lot of folks who are switching back to in-person um, uh, school and activities right now and so as we're making another huge change and adjustment um, make sure that you are, are taking care of yourself there um, so as I mentioned, incorporating music into quiet time and routines and use that to your advantage. I'm often talking to um, uh, to families about the child supporting child development. And here's how, oh, if when we're doing this song, we're doing these gross motor movements and we're doing these fine motor movements, that's going to help your kiddo learn these things and develop these skills. Um, but let's also talk about you too. <laughs> we are, our kids are, are developing and they're going to keep rocking and rolling along. And, and so what can, how can you um, take care of yourself? And so really utilizing when they're having quiet time, try and have your quiet time around then too. That's where I really think that idea of like using the songs, depending on how old your kids are, but um, you know, if they're able to play alone somewhere for, you know, 15 minutes, half hour, whatever they can handle, and you get some sort of quiet time, whatever that looks like to you. Maybe that is having your own dance party <laughs> somewhere. Maybe that is listening to um, some some different music. Um, I always tell this to early childhood teachers too, is there's a lot of, there's a lot of really good children's music out in the world. There's way more bad children's music out in the world. And so sometimes if you've got, you know, um, we all lived through baby shark, right? We all made it to the other side. And sometimes you just need to have your own quiet time where you're listening to your own music and not to kid music. And so, um, so find, find ways to do that, to incorporate that into your routine, that, that little breathing exercise we did. That's, you, you don't have to, there, there's no age limit to, um, to getting benefits from that. And so whether you're doing some breathing and stretching with your kiddos or whether you're doing that on your own, it's super easy. Um, I really like the ideas of having playlists um i will say for me i i have spotify on my phone that's really where i listen to music i use music for work that way um i understand that families you know whether you're using youtube or pandora itunes whatever it is everybody has kind of their own routines with with how they are engaging with music but make a playlist that is, um, you know, obviously make playlists for yourself. I have a relaxation playlist. I have a running playlist. I have a cleaning the kitchen playlist, a cooking, you know, cooking dinner playlist, whatever that looks like. Have those for you, but also have them for your kids too, so that you can utilize that, like, you guys just go in here and play toys for the next 25 minutes and you can put on some sort of playlist. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to mm, censor it or edit it or whatever, whatever it is, just kind of have something that's just like, we just put this on and, and this is um, set to go. 
um, and allowing that time for processing and talking about things too, kind of tying that back to that idea of that self-awareness and emotional vocabulary. So, so having songs and having introducing new sounds and new um, music to your kids, talking to your, the, as I said before, talking to your kids about what you like as well. Um, it's it's going to be meaningful for them in the long run, but it's also really meaningful for you. Maybe don't talk to your friends talk, or to your to your kids about that, but you could also um, talk to your friends. As um, Sarah said, just relying on friends and can, finding different ways to to connect with friends um, using music that way. And then lastly, as I've said multiple times, modeling that stress management modeling your self-care um, so that kids know. When I worked at um, the elementary school, uh, I, I, it always struck me that there would be, um, again, we, we, had, um, we had a lot of really unique, um, unique kids at that school and kids are having a hard time. That happens to all of us, right? And so I'd be walking down the hallway and we have a kid out in the hallway with, with a pair or with a staff person who's saying, okay, take a deep breath, calm your body down. Somebody, you know, who just had, um, had a little bit of a meltdown or was feeling frustrated or, um, upset. And then they're, they're doing that deep breathing. They're doing that like reset. Right. Um, but as Sarah mentioned, you know, helping, um, kids transition from the gross motor time, what if instead of using that deep breath um, and those those kind of you know deep breathing relaxation things, instead of waiting until we get to the point where we've had you know the 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 snapping point, the flip your lid point, um, just incorporate that throughout the day. So model that for your kids. Tell your kids when you need the break. Model for them. When I do the song. Um, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So what I have done um, is, is kind of change that around. So I'll tell kids, if you're mad and you know it, say, I'm mad, I need a break. If you're mad and you know it, say, oh, I'm mad, I need a break. So giving them language. When you're sad and you know it, say, I'm sad, I need a hug. Um, and I, I use that with kiddos. And, and that helps kind of give them some language, but we can do that by just modeling it, right? You need a break, I need a break. I'm gonna go take a break over here. You can take a break over here. Um, and so being able to do that that way. And again, yeah, feel free to use that <laughs> uh, if, if you're happy and you know it, if you're angry and you know it, um, and, and, and you can model, um, adapt that and change that however you need to, but um, the last thing I wanted to take us through is this little guided meditation. Um, because we have some time left, I'm wondering if we want to do some questions first, and then I will, will lead us through um, this guided meditation at the end. But I'm going to, let's see, turn off the share screen so I can see you again. Um, and I will just open it up if anyone has any questions, but also if anybody has any ideas, um, anything come to mind or something that has been working for you at home that's been really successful um, that you want to share with the group. Um, I I'll just kind of open it up now. We'll have a little bit of discussion and then um, and then we can go back and, and end with a little um, a little meditation time. Um, this is Sarah. I just had um, a comment and a question. So the first thing um, I was going to say is um, I remember when Jessica um, came to our presentation for our staff development day, um, you mentioned, you know, it's okay if you don't have a good voice. Cause I think a lot of times as, um, as staff, as teachers, as parents, we're like, oh my gosh, I can't carry a tune. How am I supposed to like sing my way through the day? And what I've noticed, at least on a personal level, working with kids in our, in our program, you can have the worst voice in the world and the kids will love it. <laughs> like they do not care if your voice, you don't have to be Beyonce. You don't have to be... <laughs> good as long as you have that rhythmic kind of sing-songy voice um 
I also kind of think about it when um, when we kind of do that baby kind of like when we're talking with infants, we kind of naturally do that like very like, oh, it's a baby and kind of that sing songy up and down. It's that, I think, I don't know if Jessica, if you would agree, but it's that same kind of vibe of like um, just kind of making it sing songy and happy and um, musical. So I just wanted to put that out there because I definitely um, I'm not a wonderful singer, but definitely can can pull it together at least for some of those transitions and the kids really like it. So. Um, but my question was, and I don't know if Jessica, if you like, um, this is, I guess, kind of music related, but sometimes we have kids in class where we'll do a kind of a meditation break or a yoga break and with music, or we'll do like a dance break. And some kids are just like, I don't know how to dance, or I don't like to dance, or I don't know what to do. And then they just kind of stand there and they don't know how to engage. Do you have any recommendations if, if parents or teachers are trying this with their kids and they're just, the kids are like not really knowing what to do. Like any recommendations for that? For sure. Yeah. Um, so starting there, I would just say any, the, the idea is that we want to meet kids where they're at. And so find out what are they comfortable with? Are they comfortable with stomping around, making it like, oh, can you stomp like an elephant? Can you, oh, can you make your, make your arms like you're a, a, a elephant nose. Um, and so just having some movement that is within their wheelhouse already. Um, and, and doing that with them, something, um, I do, I typically do this more with, um, with older kids, although I really, I, I have done it with some, um, pre-K kids too. Um, having everybody we're going around a circle and we're we're doing a dance circle essentially and like okay all right bobby you're up what's bobby's dance move and sometimes bobby's dance move is just wiggling his arms or sometimes bobby's dance move is just shifting from one side to the next and then the rest of us we all do bobby's dance move right and so it's really validating for them if it's if it really is a a case of just kind of being shy and really just not knowing what to do. Um, having that positive reinforcement of having their peers or having their siblings or having, you know, somebody in their family who's doing the same thing that they are. It's kind of silly. It's fun. It's the same thing as, um, uh, as yes, using, using your voice or whatever it looks like, um, or sounds like I should say, um, Make, making silly voices if if you if you are f feeling a little weird about it. make a cookie monster voice and you can sing a song that way too um whatever that looks like the the idea like like sarah said is that when you are combining rhythm and melody and when you're combining um just it's just a little bit different. It's just going to catch their ear in a different way and, and have a little more, um, it, it allows their brain multiple ways to process it. And you have a little more engagement there, but yeah, with, with that dancing or with gross motor things, find out what, what can they do? Like, Oh, are you, are your fingers dancing? Can you make your fingers dance? Let's see. Can we make all of our fingers dance? And just having something that is, is a uh, achievable level of success wherever they're at and then go from there and maybe maybe they're really just not into dancing and that's cool too that that's fine too but having but having different ways of engaging is is great yeah thank you for that question anybody else any questions ideas things that have been working hi jessica this is sarah eisen I have a quick question. Do you have any ideas on how we can use music to help with some separation anxiety? Um, we have some students that um, it's hard to leave mom and dad, especially if we've been with mom and dad a lot more now than we maybe would have been before. So do you have any ideas on maybe how we can use, use some of the music or rhymes or anything um, to help ease some of that separation from a caregiver? Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that is, um, a really good question. Again, my, my go-to is when I've been in those situations in the moment, I just, right. We, we have all of these little tunes and nursery rhymes in our head. And so I'm just thinking, 
you know, can we sing goodbye mama, goodbye mama, goodbye mama, it's time to see my friends and really having, again, having a little bit of that repetition, having a little bit of kind of the idea of like a social story. Um, even if you, even if you could pair visuals with it, um, I'm not sure what age groups we're, we're talking about here, but um, any way that can just kind of um, provide that structure and routine. And oh, this is even, even having um, a, a song that, that, you know, mom sings and we know that this is mom's goodbye song. And then when she comes to pick me up, she sings the same little song. And again, when I say song, I don't mean like, right, we don't need a full out song, but if it's just like, hello, hello, I'm here today. Um, goodbye, goodbye, I'll see you soon. Um, working with something like that. Um, also, if, if distraction is possible, I mean, jingle bells, instruments, anything that is, is really just like fun and engaging. Can we, oh, there's a new, there's a new drum in the room. Tell mom, bye, we got to go play this new drum. Um, and so something that way, that's not a perfect answer. I will, I'll think on it if I can think of, of some other specific things, but, um, but yeah, I would just say structure, even even if it is um if if we, if you haven't tried i would it would be curious to know if you haven't if we haven't tried music yet what if what if we did try music would that be enough just to be like maybe that in and of itself is is just a little bit of the distraction and a little bit of a like little little reset there for for the brain um good question i'll think on it more anybody else Um, any other, and again, I will share, um, I, I don't think I have it on the slide, but I'll put it on the slide, my email address. If anybody does have any, any follow-up things they want to ask or think about, um, uh, specific to this idea of using music at home or, um, using, or, or just music therapy in general, um, feel free to, to contact me, but, um, I think we'll end with a little, um, it's called a guided meditation. And, um, what I will do is, um, just kind of pull it, um, kind of, I'm, I'm going to put on some music and then just kind of talk through, um, this is again, it's geared towards kids. Um, but, um, just have you can experience it too and 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 maybe you'll think that was that was dumb but maybe you'll also think hey that was kind of relaxing and i can understand how this would help my kid because i've experienced it myself um and what we'll do in this one is focus on five senses um and so we're going to think of our complex we think of our five senses with that which again is something else that we can we can integrate throughout the day as a self-care thing for us um, in just that self-awareness and centering in terms of, okay, my feet are on the ground. What are things I can see? What can I hear? What can I smell? Um, and so what, uh, what we'll do here is kind of think of our imaginary calm place. Um, so I will put this back up on the screen so we kind of have essentially like a little bit of a blank canvas here and um it looks like most folks have their video off anyway so we can we can do that unless you really want to put your video on but you certainly don't have to um so wherever you're at we'll just start off with a deep breath You can close your eyes if you want to. You don't have to. 
don't have to. So think about your calm place. Maybe it's a real place. Maybe it's imaginary. Maybe it's a place you've been to before. Or maybe it's a place you want to go. In your calm place, you might be walking around. You might be sitting down. Maybe you're running or dancing. Maybe you are alone in your calm place. Or maybe you're there with other people or animals. Take a look around your calm place and think about what do you see? about what do you hear are there any smells in your calm place Taste your favorite food. Reach out in your complex. What can you feel? Maybe you feel the ground your feet are on. Maybe you can feel something with your hands. Just feel the air all around you or a warm blanket. Remember that this is your calm place that you can come to whenever you need to. You can come here whenever your brain needs to feel calm or your body needs to feel calm. Your calm place can stay the same or it can change sometimes. But it'll always be there. Another deep breath in. Let it out. If your eyes were closed, you can open them now. There we go. So maybe. Maybe kind of silly, maybe kind of nice, 
That's something that that um, kids can do as well. Um, so hopefully there are, you know, there are um, other pre-recorded little guided meditations out there, but I really like that idea of the calm place and thinking through, you know, just kind of going through that checklist and seeing what's around and, um, and, and just giving kids that ownership um, mm -hmm. over that as well. So hopefully that wasn't too silly for you all, but um, thank you all so much um, for coming, for sticking around. Um, let's see, I said I would put my email address on here. I'm just gonna actually type it onto that screen. Is there a way to do chat, like a chat box on here? Yeah, yep, um, at, at the top right of the screen, um, there should be like that little, like, it looks like a little box with lines in it. You can type it in there and then um, we can also um, send it out to everyone that wasn't able to make it tonight. But um, oh. thank you so much, Jessica, for coming. I know um, it's always hard to take that time for ourselves and for, um, just to, I love that idea of sips of self-care just kind of throughout the day and what that looks like, especially now it's so hard to find larger blocks of time to really <laughs> take that time to deep breathe and take a minute. So I'm so thankful that we had this time tonight and thank you to those of you that were able to attend with us. And hopefully this was as relaxing and kind of gave you a minute of some self-care as well. And some strategies that you can use for your kiddos at home and in the classroom. So um, unless there's any last minute questions, I can, um, we can wrap up here. Any other questions for Jessica before we end tonight? Maybe not. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. We're so glad you guys could join us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I put my email in the, um, chat box there feel free to to reach out if you have any questions and and hopefully i'll be back at centennial in person someday um to to see kids and families there but thank Wonderful. you all so much yes thank you jessica and a reminder to um the rest of you we do have another um parent speaker series next thursday i believe next thursday evening and so um if you haven't registered for that we encourage you to check that one out as well um otherwise um we look forward to seeing you online or in person hopefully sometime soon. So you guys have a great evening. Thank you again, Jessica, for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.